The leading parable of chapter 5 of the Lotus Sutra is about a large rain cloud which waters a variety of plants, and it is the plants or herbs which have provided the chapter with its title, The Parable of the Herbs. Although the variety of plants and the amount of moisture they need is part of the point of the parable, the consistency of the rain is, if anything, more important, and it may be that the parable was originally expanded on the basis of a widely used simile found in chapter 1 of the Lotus Sutra itself. One of the closing verses there reads, The Buddha will pour the rain of Dharma to satisfy those who seek the way. This chapter, again, contains some reference to the relationship between Shravakas and Bodhisattvas, but the main emphasis is on a much more general statement of the nature of the Buddha's teaching. The opening passage states this quite clearly, quote, The Tathagata is the king of all teachings, and all the things which he declares are free from falsehood. He uses his insight-led skillful means with respect to all teachings, and so expounds them. These teachings, which he proclaims, lead right into the stage of all knowledge. The Tathagata sees and knows all teachings and their final meaning, and he also knows what all living beings are doing in their inmost hearts. He penetrates these matters without hindrance, and, having a profound understanding of all teachings, he manifests perfect insight to all living beings. Close quote. There is some equivocation in the original with respect to the term here translated as teachings, and it should perhaps be more literally rendered law or laws. The same term, representing Sanskrit dharma or dharmas, can be used both for the normative teaching of the Buddha, his law or dharma, and in the plural for the factors of existence into which the world of our experience is analyzed in Buddhist thought. Sakamoto takes that which the Buddha expounds by his skillful means to be various kinds of teaching, such as moral teachings, the Four Noble Truths, the teaching of dependent origination, and the Six Perfections. In a sense, the analysis of existence into its constituent factors is indeed included in such teachings, and it is in this full sense that the term teachings is to be taken. It includes all the denotable factors which the Buddha, in his insight and skillful means, points out. The Buddha has a freely discursive grasp of these, which enables him to correlate the intention or final meaning of given factors or teachings with the inmost dispositions of the living beings whom he teaches. There is no fraud, it is argued, in the sense that the discriminated teachings find their fulfillment or their resolution in perfect insight itself. The parable is not really a story so much as an extended simile. A single great cloud pours down rain all over the world, giving moisture equally to plants, trees, thickets, and forests of all sizes. Each organism develops in its own way, blossoms and bears its fruit. Quote, Yet although the same soil makes them grow and the same rain waters them, the plants and trees are all different. Close quote. The explanation, if not already obvious, is given in the text itself, along with the following lines. Quote, the Tathagata is like the cloud, and the great sound of his voice goes out over the whole world, just as the rain cloud does. He knows the dispositions and abilities of all beings in the world, and proclaims the same Dharma to them all in various ways, so that they can benefit from it. Only the Tathagata can clearly perceive the stages in which living beings find themselves. They themselves do not understand this clearly, just as the plants and trees have no knowledge of their relative size. Nor can living beings immediately or directly accept the undivided Dharma, because they are hindered by the great variety of thoughts which they entertain. Hence, the teaching is related to these thoughts and to the practices which seem so indispensable to them. In reality, however, the Dharma is as unified as the rain cloud. What, then, is the purport of this undivided Dharma? 
or to what does it tend? The answer is given in a couple of parallel formulations of which the first runs, quote, The Dharma proclaimed by the Tathagata is of one character and of one flavor. That is to say, it is marked with deliverance, non-attachment, extinction, and finally brings one to comprehensive knowledge. Close quote. Extinction here does not mean annihilation, but rather that nirvana of a Tathagata, with respect to which the dichotomy of annihilation or existence is no longer applicable. The second formulation is, quote, The Tathagata knows this dharma of one character and one flavor, marked, that is to say, with deliverance, non-attachment, and extinction, marked with ultimate nirvana and permanently restful extinction ending in return to empty space. Close quote. The term skillful means does not occur explicitly in the prose form of the simile or in the appended explanation, though it does appear in the introductory passage as quoted already above. It also appears twice in the verse form of the simile in direct explanation of its meaning. Quote, the Buddha's equal teaching is like one sort of rain. But according to the nature of living beings, what they receive is not the same. Just as these plants and trees, each take a varying supply. In accordance with this parable, the Buddha makes things known through skillful means, and with varying terminology he proclaims the one Dharma, while out of the Buddha's own insight it is like one drop in the sea.